for Spray. Steve Lavin goes for the jump. Hey, everybody's got to get along here. Jelani McCoy throws it down strong. He had 10 and a half, UCLA up by two. There is Mike Bibby. He takes care of the alley. A.J. Bramlett takes care of the U. Bramlett with eight, four assists for Bibb. Late in the second, UCLA up by two. And at Davison, the good move. Tied at 69. Chris Johnson now inside for the win. Those are for you. Davison with the block. And oh, so that's what happened to Vanilla Ice. Arizona now with a chance to win. Jason Terry drives. Jason Lee for the game. No. We're going to go into overtime. In the OT, Lutz crew gets a quick start right off the tip. Michael Dickerson finds Miles Simon. Simon says, make a reverse layup. Arizona up by two. Bruins respond. Charlie O'Brien just got off. O'Bannon, eight in the overtime. Bruins up by a deuce. Arizona down by a deuce. Less than a minute to go. Simon tries to do it again and get it to fall. UCLA would stretch its lead at the line, and Lavin's crew comes up an 84-78 winner. O'Bannon played 42 minutes, 24 points. From slide against Cal, Jerry Green's Ducks trying to get things going in the conference. Oregon battles back. They were down seven. Tarek Brown. Three Only bucket of the night. Oregon leads by a deuce. Golden Bears would hang around. Anwar McQueen, quick step, and one. He had seven. We're tied at 56. Cal would go on a seven-zip run. Ed Gray. This guy is so tough. Baseline bottom. Gray finished up with 30. California wins at 73-62. Tony Gonzalez, 12 points, 10 boards off the bench. The Bears 12 and 5 with UCLA at Oregon State. Brevin Knight limped off with a hip pointer in the first half. The stroke looks good. Even if the hip doesn't, Brevin's still hurting. Stanford up by six. Later in the second, Beavers getting it done. Corey Benjamin, 26 points to lead everybody. Beavers up by three. Beavers now with a six-point lead. Nate Knight grabs the board. All Beavers run to the other end. Unselfish. Todd Marshall will finish it. And Oregon State gets its first Pac-10 victory of the year, knocking off number 15, Stanford, 86-77. Out for Iowa State. With a sore hamstring. Controversy. Clay Edwards called for a foul on the drive by Fred Edmonds. Tim Floyd disagrees. Take another look. As Floyd argues it should have been a charge. Well, Edmonds with a free throw. And here comes Floyd onto the floor. So immediately you get a tee for that. Right in the ref's face. And now he's gone. And, well, if I'm gone, I might as well get my money's worth. Let's talk about you right now. Let's talk about you. Let's yeah, talk about man. your family. Let's talk about everything. Assistant Steve Kraft's assistant takes over, only to see Colorado go on a 12-0 run. Chauncey Billups hits the triple. 33-26 Colorado at the half. Buffs would never look back. Billups. Gorgeous look-off drive. you got to watch this in slow motion again. Everybody thinks he's going to pass the ball. Sweet move to the hoop. The Buffs spank the Cyclones. A solid spank. 70-45 to Colorado now 5-0 and in conference play. The matinee. First half. Carmelo Travieso, Larry Kettner with authority. UMass is up by six. More from Mr. Kettner. Don't bring your weak game in here, little man. As he rejected Andy Better, the bruiser likes it. Second half, Edgar Padilla knocks down the three. He had a career-high 24. Off the missed shot, Tyrone Weeks with a rebound as BC was undressed in this game by UMass. And there's Donya Abrams trying to put his shoes back on. They were undressed indeed as the final is 90 to 70. Every Commodore short of Lionel Richie touches the ball. Billy Despaltro finishes. He had 21. Doors up by one at the break. Second half. I say, let's see Cisse. Ansu Cisse. 10 for him. Ole Miss getting back in their time. Rebs down three, five seconds to go. Joe's on Darby. No. Rebs scramble after it. Try to get another one off, but it does not happen. And the Commodores sail on. 67-64. Drew Maddox made six of eight free throws in the final minute to see 24% in the first half. Thus, they were down two. But then B.J. Mackey reversed and an intentional foul called. It turned out to be a seven-point possession for Carolina. They would never look back. Melvin Watson, it's reverse lay-in day. Larry Davis finished up with 22 and one. That's not Tubby Smith's happy face. A 13-zip Carolina run. B.J. Mackey. 21 points for him. Carolina wins it 82-71. They're 5-0 in the SEC, the only unbeaten team in the league. Razorbacks visiting Cincy. Bearcats looking to give him a licking. And Ooh. here's a licking right here. Cincinnati's Charles Williams with an elbow to the head on Kareem Reed. That will soften up a defense. And Williams then finds Damon Flint all alone for the three. Nolan Richardson says, hey, everybody in the arena saw that. Why don't you call a foul? Blatant elbow. 
Well, speaking of blatant elbows, Danny Fortson inside, and you don't want to mess with him when he's got the ball in his hands. Another ball up in the air, and Fortson's just too big and too strong for everybody. He had 18 boards. Bearcats on a 21-0 run. Damon Flint can't jam. Fortson there for the conventional two. And it was all Cincinnati, 92-57. to Danny Fortson, who scored only nine against Temple with 20. Barnes, Ishwa Benjamin to Clint Harrison for the layup. NC State up by four in the first half. Back the other way we go. Vincent Witt to Tom Weidman. He is wide, man. Clemson up 25-22 at the break. Second half. It's Witt to Greg Buckner. All alone for the easy layup. Clemson with a 9-2 burst. NC State, though, hanging tough all game long. Jeremy Hyatt floating it up lefty. The Tigers seal the deal, though. Terrell McIntyre, a little Mac attack here as Clemson would pull away 51-4. See Keith Van Horn, and they want to see a total package from a guy, but you know how to get their attention. Score, score, score. Van Horn does. Good look from Ben Caton, 13 in the first half for Van Horn, but Malcolm Johnson, bottom. Knocks down the three. Van Horn would answer from outside. Ripping cord, but Malcolm was feeling it, and I mean he was feeling it from deep. Six triples, 28 points. TCU within four at the half. Second half, Frogs coming back. Dennis Davis. That's just Dennis Davis showing off. And one, TCU down by four, but Van Horn steps up, cold-blooded dagger. Utes had a two-point lead before that, a five-point lead there, 23 and 13 for Van Horn. The Utes 12 and two, still perfect. Fun, and the game was pretty much over. Carmen Wallace to Greg Newton, cleanly shaved, and Duke would lead by 17 at the half. Second half, it's more from the Dukies. Trajan Langdon beats the double team, the hoop, and one. Langdon had 17, and here he is on the drive again. The dish to the weak side. Wallace and the Blue Devils loving it. Duke, easy. 78-59, Langdon with 17. Wojo had a career-high 16 to go. That is not Gene Cady, the Boilermakers head coach. <laughs> First half, Andre Patterson going up for the alley-oop. Can't handle it, but he does grab onto the rim. Ball goes through, will not count. No basket, no basket. In fact, that's a technical for hanging on the rim. Brian Cardinal. Oh, look at this guy. All over the court. He's got the knee braces, yeah. diving out of bounds. Into the mascot. Look out. More from the Cardinal. The man is everywhere. Misses the shot. Dives, then feeds to Jerron Cornell for the lay-in. Purdue up 32-23 at the half. Here is our man Cardinal. Oh, he's playing defense. He draws the charge. He loves the contact. Purdue is rolling. Brad Miller. Will Farley. He had 25. Purdue. Coasting 70-53. Miller with his career high, matching it with 20. Terps press defense, forces the turnover. Laurent Profit gets the loose ball. 17 wake TOs. And not timeouts, Dave Odom. Everything going the Terps way early. It's Jessica Vacious. He hits the three-pointer. Terps 27 to 8. More. That's him again going in for the layup. But watch Tim Duncan with the SWAT. Nine blocks, Wake down by a dozen at the break, though. Starting the second half with Wake Forest, 16 love run. Duncan, Williams says, you, you stay away from my basket. Deacons leading 34-32, two minutes to play. Wake down by four, Duncan again. Wake within two. Duncan then hits two free throws. The game is tied at 51. Terps waiting for the last shot. Keith Booth drives in, draws the defense, kicks it out to Profit all alone. Why not him? Bang. Duncan is stunned, and then it becomes souvenir Laron Profit Day in the stands. But look at it one more time. The light on the basket is on. The question is, did he get the ball off? You couldn't hear the buzzer. The building was so loud. But Laron signed his scorecard with Maryland winning 54-51. Everyone has excuses to make, like we're this tremendous fairy tale. Kirk King of UConn. Wonder if they got free transportation to the game. Richard Hamilton with a free three-pointer. He had 16. Then it's Monquincio Hardnett with the dunk. Warren King going, UConn led by as many as 16 over the number one team in the country, but Kansas rallied late in the first. That's La France with the late alley-oop. 34-31, they're down. Second half, Jared Haas literally gets nothing but the bottom of the net. I knew that would finally happen on a night Dan wasn't here. Kansas now leads 35-34. Jacques Vaughn to Haas to La France for the dunk. Kansas in the midst of a 12-2 run. Connecticut, though, would not go away. Rashemiel Jones nails three. UConn within two, but with 3.39 to go, the reserve guard, Billy Thomas, as the Beaver, it's the critical three-pointer, and Kansas escapes. UConn, without King, without Moore, hangs in there till 55-55 with four and a half to go, suggesting second mark to Chris Clack. 
Yakety yak, and he hangs on the rim. Texas by three, so it's all over for Louisville unless Eric Johnson. Well, he didn't hit that three pointer, so that's the ball game. Alvin Sims a rebound, one last desperation chance of Johnson at the buzzer. Unbelievable! Game tied at 70, and we're going into overtime. And Louisville, stoked by the rally in the waning seconds, just eats the Longhorns for dinner. Now some steak sauce, please. Dewan Wheat to Alvin Sims, and that's it for Tom Penders, who had a 15 point lead. Cardinals now 4 0 in overtime this year. Indeed, broken Borough misses the three. Yui Futch. We're tied. His name is <laughs> Last seconds of regulation tied. Gary Lumpkin with a chance to play hero. Gary, can we call you Pumpkin, please? We're going to overtime. In the extra session, Owls down four, Pepe Sanchez. That's a rainbow three. Trims the lead to one, but Xavier takes charge. Lenny Brown finding the car. Kevin Carr underneath. Musketeers by three. And then right after that, that man named Lumpkin. The steal. Lumpkin didn't get discouraged. All he did was score seven of his 13 points in overtime. And Gary says, don't ever call me Pumpkin again. Xavier with the four-point win. Lumpkin goes 0 for 6 in the first. Michigan. Jared Ward, the block. Brendan Hughes picks up the ball and finds his good buddy, Maurice Taylor. Nice look. Say it isn't so. Wolverines within one, Taylor with eight. Wolverines leading by five. Robert Trailer turns it over. Andre Woolridge, a one-man team, but it wasn't enough. Great play, though. Two of his 25. The game would be tied. Michigan fans not happy. Taylor, one of his six blocks. This one against Rucker. Here we go the other way. And Hughes playing big man right there, laying it in. And Steve Fisher's Wolverines finding a way as Michigan sends the Hawkeyes to their first conference.